Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome to this video on how to piece this whirly gig quilt pattern. This is a baby quilt pattern. It's going to come in square at 40 inches by 40 inches. It's going to be a perfect quilt to help you learn how to do fusible applique and cutting curves. And we're going to cut all these curves using the five inch template from our new circle template set. And I should also add that our Whirligig baby quilt pattern is also included in this circle template set too. So if you'd like to follow along, all you need to do is pick up a pack of circles and join in the fun. So for this pattern, you're going to need some background fabric prepped up. Uh, I took this purple fabric, I started with a yard and a quarter, cut it into 10 and a half inch squares, and so I needed a total of 16 squares for this quilt pattern. Now I took half of them, so I just took eight, and I folded them ha in half, just like so, and I pressed in a crease line. And then I took them and folded them in half the other way and pressed a crease line in in that other direction as well. So eight squares folded in half like that, and then the other set of eight squares, I'm gonna fold in half on the diagonal. So fold it corner to corner, give it a press, Fold it corner to corner in the opposite direction, making sure to match up those corners nicely. And this just helps us line up our circle appliques. There we go. That's our background fabric ready to go. We're going to set those squares aside. So now for the other fabric we're using, you can use one fabric, in which case you're going to need two thirds of a yard. I decided to use these 10 inch squares, these layer cake squares. They're really convenient to work with. And so in this case, I needed a total of 11 of them. And I'm gonna take these, give them a good starch and press. That's the way I prep up my fabric always. And now I'm going to apply some fusible web. And you wanna apply this to the wrong side of the fabric. And of course, I'm working with a fabric that doesn't really have a right and wrong side. You just kinda of have to look at it if you have a fabric like this and decide, okay, I think this side is the wrong side. And I am working with Steam -a Seam, Light Steam -a Seam 2. And these are some sheets that are uh, 9 by 11 or 9 by 12. And so I had to cut them and make sure that I had like a little strip over here too. So just follow the instructions on your fusible web. If you are working with yardage, of course, it would probably be most convenient to work with yardage of fusible web. You can get that. Uh, and be able to cut and fuse a lot of it all at once. So I'm just working with these little sheets here and this is working well for me. So once I get it in place, then I just press to fuse and it doesn't take very long. So just a few seconds, pressing over the surface. That looks good. And now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut it into two and three quarter inch strips. So it's up to you where you position this on your cutting mat, you know, whether you have it fabric side up or fusible web side up. Because my fusible web doesn't go all the way to the edges of the fabric, I like to cut on the fusible web side. Just keep in mind that it is slippery and it can slip out of shape pressing, uh, cutting from this side. So just keep that in mind and be extra cautious. Don't let your ruler slip out of position uh, and cause your rotary cutter to hop up on it and cut you. That's the last thing that you want. So trim up two sides, and then now I'm gonna line up with the two and three quarter inch mark. So why two and three quarters? I'm gonna be working with uh, the five inch ruler, and I want half of the circle shape or a quarter of the circle shape plus seam allowance. So I want, you know, that nice two and a half inch, but I also want a quarter inch of seam allowance too. So there we go. Okay, so I ended up with three strips. Now I'm gonna take these strips, I'm gonna have one edge that's still kind of raw and rough and the other edge nicely finished. So from that nicely finished edge, I'm gonna go on ahead and cut a two and three quarter inch square and I'm gonna cut one rectangle that is exactly five inches long. So this is two and three quarters high by five inches long. 
So there we go. I have cut and prepped up all of my squares. Uh, I need a total of 32, and I'm using a nice variety of different pinks here. I also need 32 of the rectangles as well. All right, so now I'm gonna stack those together. I've got a total of three here, and I'm pretty sure I can go on ahead and cut all three at once. So I'm gonna lay that down, making sure that all of those edges are in nice alignment. And I'm gonna grab my five inch circle template and lay this on top. Now, I want you to notice how I'm laying this out. I'm making sure that the curved edge is reaching all the way to the edge of my fabric up here. And I've got these etched lines on the template. This is a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric. So these straight lines down here are a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric. That is adding in the seam allowance that's gonna end up being sewn uh, and stitched down once the blocks are put together. So that is intentional. That's why we cut these at two and three quarters. So this looks good. Be very careful, very mindful of where you position your fingers as you're cutting around this template. So I like to position my fingers like this. I am left-handed. So as I go, I'm kind of swinging my body around and cutting all the way around. Now, this is with a 45 millimeter cutter. I do find that working with a 28 sometimes get used. It's just a little bit of an easier cut, especially with the smaller circles if you're working with something smaller. But here's the thing, uh, the smaller the blade, the faster it's going to dull. And this one has already gotten just a little bit dull in doing this. So keep that in mind. I like a bigger blade simply because it doesn't get dull as fast. And yeah, that still looks great. So there we go. That is how you're gonna cut your half circle shapes. And now let's cut this quarter circle shape too. So yeah, you can get away with a 45, definitely. But if you're feeling like mm, you just really want a nice close cut, you really want it to be super, super smooth, use a smaller blade. Use a, a 28 millimeter rotary cutter blade and you're really gonna have great success. All right, so in this situation, we're gonna be lining up the template right with the corner of that fabric, corner of that square, and right with the corner of the square so that the etched lines are roughly a quarter inch from the outer edges of the square. So that's the way it should look. Carefully position your fingers and carefully cut around that curve. There we go, yep. My, my blade is just a little on the dull side. Definitely need to work on that. But if you are careful and don't let the ruler, the template slip, then you can trim that up as you saw me just do. And it still ends up being a nice, perfect curve. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna finish trimming these up and then we're gonna create our blocks together. Okay, we're gonna take the squares that we folded in half with horizontal and vertical crease lines and we're gonna take our applique, our half circle appliques, and peel off that paper backing. And we're gonna fold the appliques in half and just do a little crease line at the top and at the bottom. And this is kind of sticky. You know, steam is seem too light. Once you peel the paper off, it gets kind of sticky. So just watch out for that. And I like to fold that together, right sides together, just so that way the crease lines are then nested downward so that then when you place it on the block, it's gonna nest nicely into the crease lines that we already put on the block. There we go. And you're just using those crease lines, both the ones that we pressed on the block and the ones on the applique, to just help you line that up nice and even. And then give it a three to four second press, just like so, and it's pressed in place. So that's how to do those half circle blocks and then now we'll take the diagonal block and we're gonna do the exact same thing. And get on the back here of this applique and carefully peel that paper away. And I want to fold this in half, just bring those corners together and get a little crease line here right on that curve. There we go. And now place it in that corner. Just line everything up nicely. Usually the corner ones, you don't necessarily have to fold those in half, 
but it is nice to do on the half circle ones because those are a little bit easier. You know, you could kind of <laughs> really have a long, long space to play as far as where that goes in accurately. With the corners, they're a lot easier to place. Give that a three to four second press and you're ready for the next step. So now we're gonna take our blocks and piece them together in sets of two. And you wanna make sure that you always keep the same blocks together you know, in the same order. So I always had the corner block on the bottom and the half circle block on top. Fold that over, stitch that together with the quarter inch seam allowance. And here's what it looks like when you get two together. And if you have lined this up nicely, that it's going to flow right in from one applique over to the other. I just think that's absolutely perfect. Now on the back side, I did press the seam allowance open in order to get the full expression of that seam in order to flatten out those fabrics. And then I fold it over and pressed it flat. So that is how I did that. You're gonna piece a total of four blocks together to create a row. And then you're going to piece four rows together to create your finished baby quilt. So that is it for our Whirly Gig baby quilt pattern. I hope you enjoy learning how to piece and fuse this with me. Now it's up to you how you want to finish these raw edges. Now, I think I'm actually going to leave this raw until I get it on my long arm. And then I'm gonna do some stitching around the edges of these appliques as I'm doing my quilting. Keep in mind that that's absolutely allowed. You can also take this to your home sewing machine and do a decorative stitch. That would look really cute too. There's lots and lots of creative possibilities. So if you would like to create this whirl gig quilt pattern and cut mini circle shapes, come and check out our circle template set. You can find it at leahday.com circle. Until next time, let's go quilt.